Hey boys, the end, we good? Okay, this is the video I promised about switching your NeoVim config to Lua. If you're using Vim 9 instead of NeoVim, this won't apply to you. They decided to make Vim script faster, which I honestly hope that NeoVim will benefit from. But today, since NeoVim decided to take the Lua approach, we're going to be talking about Lua. This is the page, my init.lua, which used to be my init.vim, that if you remember from my last video, if you saw it, it had a vim script that just started everything in my config folder automatically. I haven't been able to get that successfully configured in Lua yet. I am happy to see that the function in Lua that deals with uh, working with file paths is very similar to C. So it looks like it's going to end up looking similar to the function I wrote to uh, to ask me a question before I quit DWM or before I reboot DWM. So it's going to be very similar to some code I've already written, so I'm stoked on that. But for now, this is what I have where I uh, just call require, which is basically the Lua source for this type of thing. There's also a source command in Lua and a Lua file command in Lua, but I believe those are mostly used in plugin making in Vim, so I'm right now just using the require in this page, and then I'm putting all the all of the plugins that I am requiring, uh, well not plugins, but config files in the uh, Lua directory, and as I did with my previous setup, I'm starting in the init.lua, which was previously my second init.vim that had my Vim initializations in it. And up here you're going to see my uh, local variables that I'm mapping just to longer names I'm going to use. And this is a very common construct you'll see in a lot of uh, programming languages. I guess I don't, I don't want to say more real programming languages because that seems disingenuous to Vim script. But you know, programming languages that are used to compile EXEs and not scripting languages. A lot of the times you'll see people importing things or making variables with longer names just to make the other code more readable. So uh, this is going to be global variables and we're going to import that as G and just any old option and this is going to be imported as opt, o -O -P -T, opt and that's going to just take the place of the previous set in uh, init.vims or vimrcs and we're also going to import command and this is just going to let us run vim script directly inside of uh, the command function and uh, that looks like this where you just have it as command or vim.command if you don't alias it and then you just have a string that is just directly any vim script you want to run and later on you're going to see how I've handled multi-line vim scripts uh, in a pretty cheap and not very elegant way which I really hope can get resolved later Alright, so this is going to be the same as my other one, I, as my other uh, init file. Uh, you're going to see that I've sectioned it off this time into global options, window options, and buffer options. And that's just because other, uh, if I wanted to set this on a file basis and not as a global, global thing in my initial files, like as something maybe for a file type. Uh, each of these options has different specifications uh, of how you would set it, either, either as a global option for that file type, a window option for that file type, and a buffer option for that file type. So one of the steps I've taken for switching to Lua is just to meticulously over-document everything, and that's just to help me personally know what's going on, uh, since I'm not so familiar with Lua. And here we're going to see options that don't conform to any of those three. So like global variables, which are completely different than options. You're going to set those with the G. Or vim.g if you haven't aliased it. Uh, and then uh, shift with, I believe this is a buffer option. I don't know why that's here, but I'm not going to go ahead and change that now. And for color scheme, a lot of this is just going to be in commands still because I haven't seen any way to do this in Lua, so we're just going to be sending the command as Vim script. And then the same for highlighting the 81st line in dark red that I, I like to do. You'll see that here. And that's just something I've always done, and I don't plan on stopping. 
And then just showing special characters for white space. You can see I have my uh, EOL character here. And file encodings and all that. Uh, things that are commented out are just things that I haven't gotten sorted in a little yet and I haven't felt like taking the time to do. And now you'll see here is an example of how I handle multi-line Vim scripts. And in Lua, if you just do the double square brackets, then it lets you do a multi-line string that ignores escape characters, so escape or escape sequences. And escape sequences are started by the backslash. And if you wanted to use a backslash character every single time you use it in a string, you'd have to use two of them to escape the escape sequence. And I don't feel like doing that in all of my multi-line strings, so in most of my commands, instead of using uh, single or double quotes, which are the same in Lua, I use the double square brackets, which just makes all of my VimScript commands work uh, more easily. And I've taken a chance, and since this is Lua, I've broken my files up a little bit more, and I've split auto commands and commands up into two different files and that's just a personal choice and for plugin managers I have had to switch from DM to pack because you're going to need your plugin manager uh, if you're going to switch to an init.lua versus init.vim I believe you're going to need it to be written in Lua to source correctly uh, you might be able to use DN with uh, the uh, like Lua sorry about that Lua and then like uh, like three of these things or something but I've just gone ahead and switched my whole setup straight to Lua so I don't need to use any guards to tell them that I'm going to be using Lua code now and honestly even though I don't have any lazy any lazy plugin lo loading setup I'm so far noticed not noticing any slowdowns even though I have almost the same amount of plugins loading uh, so that's probably due to just the increased speed that we get from Lua versus VimScript for a lot of my old setup was loaded with functions and I believe one of the primary things that Vim9 is adding is uh, increased speed with with Vim functions and since I was loading my whole setup with a meticulous function functions calling functions it, it was probably pretty slow but it was very easy for me and it only added a few milliseconds Jesus. So I still have my a lot of my auto commands written in uh, in VimScript with the command function, and a few of them are switched over to uh, this, which is in the utils. And this is just a Lua a Lua script that makes auto command, you know, like the blocks for me. So anything that's grouped together. <coughs> as an auto command block with a name this kind of handles for me and uh, I haven't used that on too many things yet just the uh, just the auto command I used to have that opened swaps uh, files with swaps and read only which I don't really use anymore because I set my vim to not use swaps but it's it's nice to have stuff in there that reminds you of the past and if I'm not calling it it's not making my vim slower and then this one that I really like, which sets relative numbers off if I'm in insert mode, because I can't really use relative numbers in insert mode. And then on normal mode, when I can use commands to jump around lines, it turns them back on. And this is, this is one of my favorite commands, because I just feel like it makes the editor feel uh, more utilitarian with what it's showing me. And you'll see everything here in command. I just feel like it's a little bit sloppy because it's just Vim script that I'm calling from inside Lua. And you'll see anything that has lots of backslashes I use the brackets for because I don't want to have to escape every single one of those. That's just going to get tedious. And for mappings, we're going we're gonna to alias the map. And that's going to... This is going to be the one that actually matters the most for aliasing, just because this is pretty long. You're not going to want to have to have this in front of every single line. And really, uh, the only two things you have to worry about here are if you want to use a no remap, or sorry, or just no remap or not. And there's very few things you want to map without no remap. As you can see, one of the only ones I really map without no remap is the ability to 
close files without, you know, close sudo files without having to do anything special. And yeah, this is pretty self-explanatory. You're just going to go ahead and throw everything here inside the map function where it has either nor uh, the first character is going to tell you if you want to have it be mapped for normal mode, command mode, terminal mode, print mode, insert mode, visual select mode, and you're just going to have the first character there, what is actually being mapped, or what it's being mapped to, and then you're going to call options or options F in case you want to have it be no remap or not. And you could just go ahead and throw this in there at the end. You're going to need to include the brackets because this isn't a string. This is what's known as a, uh, I want to say dictionary, but I don't know that much, Lou. I haven't looked too much into it yet. I'm mostly just doing this because I like hopping on, hopping on trends and trying out new things. All right. I think that might be everything from this section, and the file system is going to be pretty much the exact same as I showed you in my last one. You'll see this time in my after and plugins, I have my VimScript plugin uh, files as opposed to before I had my Lua in here. I, I just like to do that to keep them separate. I don't believe you actually have to uh, put the Lua in one and VimScript in another. And for file type detect, I've gone ahead and just used utils again to make this one gigantic auto group that detects file types. You could just do this as individual commands, but I just kind of feel better having it all displayed in this way. It just makes me feel like I'm using the little more. And for the file type plugins, you know, same thing for my audio one. It's just a command. It's just one in here, so I didn't bother aliasing it. And I've used the double square brackets because I don't feel like having to worry about anything not working. All right. Uh, same for my auto loads. I've just gone ahead and made these uh, commands calling Vim script functions. I could probably rewrite this all in Lua, and I'm probably going to uh, probably going to go ahead and do that eventually. But I only have two functions: one to open everything, and one to turn spelling on and off in case I'm writing something that I need to check spelling for. So I just don't feel like doing it right now. All right, and that's going to be everything. And this has just been uh, setting up your your, your uh, NeoVim setup in Lua. And I guess this has also been setting it up in an idiomatic runtime. Since uh, this is an idiomatic runtime for VimRC and Lua. All right, guys, have a good one.